funny to all of you once again. Take out your teaching sheets this morning. Trust you had a good Thanksgiving. And as I mentioned before, you had plenty to eat. Uh, leftover turkey leg and a piece of pie over the next couple of days. But um, happy few days after Thanksgiving. And uh, looking forward to this morning's message. And uh, I don't think I'll be too long this morning. I'd like to get right after it. I'm finishing our short series entitled uh, Thanksgiving Blend. And today is the second installment. Next week we'll, we'll uh, have a few messages before the, uh, that have to do with Christmas before our Christmas Eve, um, our Christmas brunch and our Christmas Eve celebration. But um, I loved, uh, yes, or excuse me, last week's message on Thanksgiving. And I'm going to take a moment, and just uh, in a, just a brief moment, I'll take a few moments and just a brief moment to review those things. But I wanted to talk to you about Thanksgiving Blend, and I start off there on your handout uh, with the title, Blend uh, means to mix together so thoroughly that things become inseparable. So that's uh, what I'd like to stress when we talk about Thanksgiving this morning. Last week, I explained to you that I was passing through a local Starbucks to pick up a a cup of coffee, and as I was going through, um, <laughs> as I was going through uh, inside, I saw there on the counter, uh, along with the uh, uh, the tumblers and the cups, uh, different bags of coffee. And this was in a in a uh, fall basket. It's entitled Thanksgiving Blend, and I, I was wondering what could I title these two messages and. Voila, it hit me. I just said, that's it. Thanksgiving Blend will be the, the name of these two messages. And uh, as I was talking to myself, the girl looked at me and said, she, like I was kind of crazy. And she said, are you talking to me? And I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm just talking to myself. Um, and she says, oh, that's, that's nice. And we chuckled over that. I bought me a bag of the Thanksgiving Blend. And the reason is because our, as I was... Um, I got very excited about it because as I was reading through the back of it, uh, it describes this coffee. I just need to let you know that um, on Christmas, excuse me, Thanksgiving morning, I did open the coffee up. I ground some beans, and uh, my dear friend Carl was asking me, uh, when are you going to drink that? It's going to be stale before you know it. I want to let everyone know that I did have um, Thanksgiving win coffee wonderful, and uh, just let me read a little bit about it, because uh, this is the idea that I want to portray this morning when we're talking about Thanksgiving. Um, this coffee here informs us that, that it was, uh, the beans are infused with the following, it's notes of candied pecan uh, and sage, and dried figs, it's, it's amazing, this is right off of the back. I wrote it here so I could see it, featuring beans from the Great Rift Valley in Africa, Sumatra and Guatemalan Antigua region, and uh, this coffee showcases, uh, uh, it showcases uh, flavors of the world's most distinctive coffee growing region. It goes on to state that it is created by our master blenders in the way a chef might prepare a Thanksgiving feast. And that's what I mentioned. I hope that you had a Thanksgiving feast a few days ago. The result is an elegant cup with notes of candied pecan, sage, and dried figs. Recently roasted, excuse me, richly roasted and delicately sweet, this balanced blend is a celebration of the season. That's the advertisement on the bag of Thanksgiving blend here that I have in my hand. And um, I need to let you know, by the way, I mentioned I opened it up, but um, uh, I have to say it was very hard to distinguish, um, to actually taste or distinguish the flavors that it advertises. Notes of pecan, uh, uh, candied pecans, and sage and dried figs. But nonetheless, it was an excellent cup of coffee, and I'll enjoy this. Uh, throughout the remainder of uh, the next couple of weeks. So, 
On your notes, um, I don't have them, but um, before I get to them, I wanted to give you a little brief, uh, a little brief summary of what we talked about last week. Because last week's message ties into this week's message. Again, the idea of blending means to mix together so thoroughly that things become inseparable. Last week I talked about uh, some very interesting points, but they tie into this morning that I want you to uh, continue to be thankful and to not just say, hey, Thanksgiving is a day to be thankful, but it is a lifestyle. So what did I talk about last week? Well, the very first thing I said that thankfulness uh, is where your best life begins. If you uh, didn't uh, catch it, you didn't, you weren't here, or you, you can catch it uh, on online and either Facebook or on um, uh, the website or YouTube. But I said that your best life begins with Thanksgiving. And I know you want a better life. You want your best life. Let's remember that it begins with Thanksgiving. I also talked about the expression of thankfulness is life-giving. If you want your best life, you need to have something that's life-giving. Something that motivates you. Something that brings life into your very uh, being. Thankfulness does that. And then I spent a lot of time on the following, and I expressed it this way. We need to prioritize, prioritize and protect the safeguards in the gears of thankfulness. Prioritize and protect the safeguards in the gears of thankfulness. And I use the analogy of, of a 10-speed bicycle I had growing up. One day I had it, and it fell, in, it fell on the ground and in, uh, into a pile of dirt. got very dirty, didn't really think about it. But as I began to ride away, I realized that the dirt had got into the sprocket and the gears, and I was not able to shift gears. The bike no longer functioned, functioned properly. So we need to be very careful to make sure that dirt and debris don't get into our gears of uh, thankfulness. Um, and I, this is what I mentioned. We start by being less thankful and start to grumble with these things. Think about them. And in review, we uh, are less thankful and begin to grumble when we're not pursuing personal spiritual growth. Number one, we have to be pressing into God, pressing into His Word, pressing into His principles personal growth. Uh, we become less thankful and start grumbling when we've accepted the common attitude of the culture. It's being forced down our throats. All the, the vain philosophies of the world, the attitude of the culture. We need to be very careful because that affects our thankfulness. When we allow pride to have a place in us, we need to guard our hearts so we don't become prideful. Because in doing so, we become less thankful and begin to crumble. And when we lost focus, let's continue to focus on what's important. Don't be sidetracked with everything else that's coming into us. Uh, we become uh, less thankful and begin to grumble when we violated God's life principles. That's what I love so much about the Word of God. And Sunday morning we go over what is important, the principles that God has given to us. We lose sight of his principles, we're in trouble. I liked this one. When we stepped into the, uh, the devil's comparison trap, when we begin to compare ourselves one with another, that is not good. We become less thankful. We begin to grumble because we may not have just what someone else has. The comparison trap, guard yourself against that. We become less thankful and begin to grumble when we've adopted unrealistic and wrong expectations. I mentioned last week that disappointment is a result of unmet uh, expectations. We become disappointed because we expected something. Make sure that your expectations align up to the Word of God and what He promises He's going to do. And then the last one I talked about, we become less thankful and start to grumble when we're nursing anger so important for each one of us. When we're nursing anger, we're taking care of it. We're, 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 we're guarding it, if you will, uh, when we're nursing anger, unforgiveness, and bitterness. 
See, all three of those go together. When we do not um, address our anger, uh, our unforgiveness, and our bitterness, what happens? We become less thankful, and we begin to grumble. That's what I talked about last week. But this morning, I'd like to take the next few moments to talk about some things that are very uplifting and positive. Uh, there are four very important reminders of the result of being thankful. It's just not a one day, last Thursday, of Thanksgiving, but a lifestyle of being thankful. And I believe each one of us can uh, find room in our, our own hearts, our own spirits, our own lives to improve in this area. I'd like to start off with these verses here listed on your handout. I gave them last week. They're so very important. In the book of Proverbs 4.23, be careful uh, what you think because your thoughts run your life. So very to the point. Be careful of what you think because your thoughts run your life. In Proverbs 13.3, guard your words. I love this translation as a passion translation. Guard your words and you will guard your life. But if you don't control your tongue, it will ruin our everything. So, out of these two verses, we have how we think and how we speak. So very important. The psalmist put it this way. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The words of of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. So you see all of this works together together to produce um, uh, an environment of being thankful. So very important. So I have four points once again. The first one, you can fill in the blanks here. Thanksgiving increases your faith. So very important and um, so very basic. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is based on faith, right? We hear the gospel message, and by faith we say, Yes, Jesus, I'm a sinner, I need forgiveness, and I accept by faith what you did for me on the cross of Calvary, and you've forgiven my sins. By faith we continue with our walk and our growth with the Lord. We go through life, we even sang about this this morning, even... Even when I can't see uh, everything happening by faith, I believe that God's in control. And thanksgiving increases your faith. We love these verses out of Hebrews. They're foundational. Just like to take a moment just to think, read them and think about them again. Faith, now faith, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Confidence and assurance when we exercise and we grow faith. How do we do that? By being thankful. When we're thankful, there is something that happens that increases our faith. So often we go through life and we just, we're finding it hard to function or hard to believe for a situation. But once we become thankful, it helps us to understand why. Well, we do it uh, uh, without seeing everything, but there's an assurance and a confidence that comes. In the uh, verse 6 of Hebrews 11, without faith it is impossible to please God. We can't even get to square one without th this idea of faith. I want to please God. You want to please God. Without faith it is impossible to please God, please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So these two foundational verses that we see in Hebrews are so very important in it, and it uh, gives that foundational starting point that thanksgiving increases our faith. You know, um, just recently, uh, the season three of the movie, um, The Chosen, came out. Wonder if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. You can see it on uh, cable or uh, Netflix somewhere. But season three, um, episode one and two, was recently shown this last week in the theaters. And I had a chance to take Joanne and a 
few close friends, and we went to see the movie. And it was so wonderful to see how these chosen disciples were processes, processing everything that the Lord Jesus wanted them to do. Jesus chose them, they began to follow him, and yet Jesus begins to teach them, you know, in the future, you guys are, it's going to be, a, it's, you're going to have some problems. And you could see the, the concern and um, the worry on their very faces. In the book of Luke 17, Luke chapter 17, Jesus was talking about not only are you going to have problems, but you're going to have to learn to live your life in a whole different manner. And he began to talk about forgiving one another. And uh, Jesus says, you know what? Matter of fact, when you get offended, you have to forgive not just once and done, but seven times 70. You have to continually be forgiving. And that, that's a hard thing to do. You know it is. I know it is. They knew it was. And then, so, so what, what do they do? They say, Jesus, that's really, really hard. They want to believe. And want to walk in what Jesus was teaching us. But this is a response in 17.5 of Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. How are we going to be able to do that? They prayed, Lord, increase our faith. I'd like to propose to you this morning to do things that God wants you to do. That we read about in the word of God. Be thankful and that will increase your faith to do those very things. Case in point, to continually forgive somebody that steps on your feet, that offends you. Increase our faith. Now, I like this verse out of Mark 9.24. Um, there was a man who had a boy that was um, possessed by a demon. You can read about it there in the ninth chapter. And um, Jesus was healing people. People were coming up right and left from different towns, different villages, and he shows up and says, uh, Jesus, I, I need somebody, I need you, Jesus, to touch my son. He's, he, he seems to be, um, uh, seems to have a demon in him every time he talks. And he goes crazy, and uh, Jesus um, is watching this situation. And uh, Jesus actually responds in such a way. He says, wow, you know what? Uh, I see you coming with your son. I see he needs to be healed. Uh, and I see uh, your anticipation. And I can even sense that you're thankful that I'm going to heal him. And this is what um, uh, happens in 24 of Mark 9. After uh, Jesus... Um, uh, talks to the, the man about the boy. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. When Jesus says, all you have to do is believe, he says, I do believe. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. So this conflict's going on in this, this father's life. But we see that this, he steps out, he's thankful, he says, I do believe. I know that you can do something. But at the same time, I, I, there's a little part of me that doesn't believe. Help my unbelief. So Jesus, uh, the chapter goes on to say that how he touches the boy, the boy was healed. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great story. But I want to remind each one of us this morning that um, Thanksgiving increases our faith. Let me give you some, um, some helps here. Uh, when we give thanks, what happens? Uh, this there's a couple fill in the blanks here. So the, when we give thanks, we become more aware of God's blessing. Once again, we become more aware of God's blessing. It increases our faith, but when we give thanks, we become more aware of how God has blessed us. I use this, this old chorus so often. Because it's one of my favorites, and I, I've been around a long time, but I grew up on the old chorus, count your blessings, name them one by one. 
And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Anytime I'm struggling with being thankful, what do I do? I count my blessings. I take a moment and I think of, of um, my salvation, where I came from, how God has called me and touched me and equipped me. And then I think about my family, I think about my wife, the many years that we've had together, what we've been able to experience. I think about our children. I think about our grandchildren. And before long, I think, wow, I am such a blessed man. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. I want you to do that. Once again, we become more aware of God's blessing when we give thanks. Also, we increase appreciation for God's goodness. To appreciate something, we have to pause. We have to focus on it. And we may say, wow, this is really good. I appreciate this thing. Christmas is coming in just a few weeks, and I was talking to some of the kids around here, what's going on? I can't wait for Christmas. Oh, that's a new Christmas sweater. And I say, if you've been good this year, you've got to be good. You get good presents, uh, lots of presents. Oh, yeah, I've been really good. And um, there's an anticipation of giving gifts and receiving them. And um, uh, the goodness of God comes to us when we become thankful. Good, I have this phrase, uh, God is good all the time, right? God is good all the time. Well, he is good all the time, and we need to remember that. We give thanks when we build anticipation of God's care in our present and future. God cares for you. We sing songs about that. The older you get, you realize, you know what? I'm looking around. I see Bodies begin to slow down. Health issues begin to crop up. Think about, is God going to care for me when I get older? I have an anticipation that he will care for me. I'm anticipating that, and so I give thanks for that. And then this last one, when we give thanks, we increase our willingness and readiness to obey God's word and his will. Write those words down. Willingness, readiness, to do what? To obey God's word and will. When we're thankful, when we have a spirit of thanksgiving inside of us, welling up with inside of us, we see that God wants us to do certain things. When we, when we read his, his word and we, we uh, receive instruction, and then there's this anticipation and willingness and readiness to, to do what God wants us to do. So very important. Let me finish this first section with, with this verse out of cult. Colossians 2 and verse 7. As in the New Living Translation, so good. Let your roots go down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in truth. In the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with what? What's the verse say? Thankfulness. Once again, let your roots go down into him and let your life be built up on him. Then your faith will grow in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Once again, thankfulness increases your faith. How do you do that? You become planted. You begin to operate in this idea of being thankful and then the byproduct of that is you overflow with thankfulness and increase your faith. Let's go on to number two. Once again, four things here uh, that want, I want to encourage you with and with what I talked about last week. To blend all of this together. There's nothing is indis, uh, uh, indistinguishable, but it's all one thing of being thankful. Number two, thankfulness is a key part of the path to God's peace. So very good. Write down path and peace. I love this because we live in a, a, in a day and age, especially today, when we struggle at times with having the peace of God. Our lives are complicated. Our lives are full of drama, as I always often say. And, uh, and so often we are struggling to find peace. 
How do we maintain peace? How do we obtain it and then maintain it? Well, thankfulness is a key part of that. Let me give you a few verses here and to make a couple of comments. In this movie, The Chosen, the, the filming of it, uh, the acting, how they portrayed Jesus at certain parts of these Bible stories is amazing. And again, just last week I was able to see this season three, the first episode, and it shows Jesus as he delivered this, the great sermon, as we know it, the Sermon on the Mount, we find it in Matthew 6. And here, around hundreds of people, he's preaching. And you can see the expressions of the people, and you can see the sincerity of Jesus as he begins to teach. And as he's giving all of these life lessons, just wonderful. This, the, the, the scriptures just come alive seeing this, this reenacted. Just amazing. Um, he talks about what you're going to experience in life, especially as you follow him. He talks about that there will be difficulties, but he says this in 6.25 of Matthew out of the New Living Translation, I'd like to read these words to you. This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your, mo and your body more than clothing? And this is so wonderful for us to hear and to make sure that we understand in the midst of our problems is our life more important than the food that we're going to consume and the clothes that we're going to wear so often our culture says you got to wear this you got to you got to buy this you got to have this this jewelry or drive that car I like to eat just like the, the next guy. But you know what? If you're hungry, a piece of bread, <laughs> a slice of cheese, and a glass of water will take care of any hunger pains that you might have instead of a gourmet meal. Now, it, we don't have to live like the world promotes us. We need to be content with what he's given to us. And more importantly, not to worry to the point that our lives are shattered with worry and there is no peace. I like the disciples um, as once again as Jesus is teaching them uh, to follow him and what they're going to, to uh, encounter. You know that they at some point said, man, I don't know if I can handle this. And there was a there was an anxiety in them. And just like you and I, there was an ang times where anxiety would flare up in their own life. And there came a point where Jesus is getting ready to leave. He's getting ready to die on the cross. And, and he's trying to instill this idea of peace into his disciples. He says this in, in John 14, 27. You know, I'm getting ready to leave. I'm leaving you with a gift. Here's the gift. Peace of mind and heart. That's what he's giving to the disciples. Peace of mind and heart. Our mind sometimes becomes it becomes so so unpeaceful. Our hearts unpeaceful because of everything that we're experiencing. But Jesus says, "I'm giving you peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid." I remember in in this uh, chosen. At one point early on, he sent them out two by two to do what he did, to begin to heal the sick, to cast out demons. And you could just see the worry and the troublesome on their faces. We've we got to do what you're doing? And he begins, it's just, just two, two by two. He goes and sends them out. Matter of fact, he, and these guys are not dummies. They've got a pocket full of money. He said, don't take any money. Don't take any extra clothes. Just go. And I'll provide for you. And, and he says this, 
Don't be worried in the midst of what I'm sending you to do. There can be peace. This morning, I'd like you to ponder what God has in store for you for the remainder of this year and next year. What's in store for you? I want you to have that same gift that Jesus gave to his disciples, peace of heart and mind that they could take on, that you can take on anything that God calls you to do. You can do that through the peace of God. Don't be troubled. I like how Paul really brings this idea home in Philippians 4. We know these verses. I'm going to slowly read them to you out of the Living Translation or Living Bible Translation. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs. Don't forget to thank Him for your answers. Very, very key. Thank Him for the answers. And if you do this, you, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet as you rest and as you trust in Christ Jesus. And now, brothers, this is Paul's writing to these brothers. As I close this letter, let me say this one more thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about the things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine, good things and others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about it. So good. Think about all the things that you can thank God for and be glad about it. That's where Thanksgiving comes in. And then he also writes in the book of Colossians, the third chapter, 15th verse. 15th verse. And, he, and he closes a lot of his letters this way, the Apostle Paul does. He writes, let the peace of Christ, uh, let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. I talked about that at the beginning. Control your thinking because you were all called together in one body to have what? Peace, always be thankful. That's how Paul ends this, um, this book of Colossians. So important to understand, we have to be thankful. Number two, once again, thankfulness is a key part of the path to God's peace. Number three, three of four, number three, thanksgiving gives hope for the future. Who cares about the future? I do. I'm sure you do. It's part of our nature to, to think about and care about the future. If we're just uh, on the river of life, lazy laying down in the raft and don't really care about the future, we are missing it. We must care about the future. But Thanksgiving gives hope for the future. And I love the, the verses that we find in Scripture. Don't have time to read them all this morning, but I've chosen... Hebrews 12, and verse 1, once again out of the Passion Translation. Check this out. When we think about Thanksgiving gives hope for the future. As for us, we have all these great witnesses who have encircled us like clouds. So we must not let go of every... So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin which so easily that we so easily fall into. Let go of your failings. Let go of your, your, your mistakes. The writer of Hebrews says, then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been already marked out for us. God has a path marked out for your life, for my life. He has a future. 2023 is right around the corner. It's all laid out there. And as you press into God, especially with Thanksgiving, a hope for 2023 will rise up. In just a few short weeks, we say goodbye to 22 and we, we, we think about 23. The future is very important. 
let's not get stuck in the, uh, the rat race of just being um, uh, taken down by the disappointments of, of today and yesterday and not thinking about the future. God has so many great things for you. God wants to do so many wonderful things in your life. I'm, I'm smiling inside of me because uh, I, I saw a little text from my daughter-in-law and she had a picture of nine different uh, things that potatoes can become. Potato chips, mashed potatoes, potatoes this, potatoes that, with this little caption. If God can do so many things with a potato, think of what he can do with you. And in 2023, I want you to have a, an anticipation that God's going to do wonderful things with your life. Not just wake up and go through another day and go to sleep and do it again six more days and call it a week and call it a month and call it a year. God wants to do great things. He has great things in store for your future. And Thanksgiving is hope for the future. And then the last one, I love the last one, um, it's very practical and so needed for me and for you. Number four, Thanksgiving improves your relationships. Write those two words down. Improves your relationships. I talk about the drama that we have in our lives. And it, it's so very important to understand the importance of relationships. How we relate to one another. First and foremost, our relationship starts with Jesus. Knowing him as our personal savior. And then to God. And, and how God works into every situation in our, our lives. Our relation with our relationship, our spiritual relationship is so very important. It trumps everything. It's with him first and foremost. But then after that, our relationships, yes, with one another. With a husband, our wife, our children, our grandchildren, our co-workers, our boss. People that we run into all the day. How we work with one another, our relationships. In First Thessalonians, Paul writes again, how we thank God for you. Because of you, we have great joy as we enter God's presence. Paul was saying, I thank you. We thank you for our relationship that we have with you. We need to be thankful for one another. And, and uh, when we are, our relationships improve. You begin to thank God for everything and count your blessings. Your relationship with him improves. Same thing with you and I, with our husband, with our wife. It improves. Um, I have two things there on your handouts, two quotes, two things in quotes. The first, the most important thing you need for a good relationship is positive communication. Positive communication. You can even underline that. Positive communication. So often, we're critical. We're not positive. We're looking at the negative. We're signing our remarks. We're nitpicking. We're negative. The most important thing you need in a good relationship is, a po is positive communication. And then I like this one. It's kind of a carryover. To communicate thankfulness to God and to others is a key, is a key component to improve relationships. Communicate thanksgiving. How do we do that? It's very simple. You can write this on the side there somewhere. Write the words, thank you. Just write them down. Block letters. Thank you. Just say thank you. So often we get tied up in this or that, and we don't have time to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for. What are you thankful for? Hey, thank you for starting my coffee this morning. Thank you for making my tea. Thank you for even the stuff that we're supposed to be doing. Thank you for taking out the trash. Thank you for doing the dishes. Thank you for making the bed. This household chores. Thank you for washing my car. Thank you for um, giving me a hug. Thank you for giving me that gift. Thank you for offering me the last bit of salad at the dinner table. Thank you. So often we forget just to simply say thank you. And when we do that, I guarantee you this will improve your relationships 
one with another and with God. Um, I have this down. I don't know if it's on your handout. Quote, unquote, many relationships are gratitude deprived. Gratitude provoked, uh, deprived. Our relationships, we don't give enough thanks. And then I like this very last one. <clears throat> what, if it's not there, write it down. What you appreciate, appreciates. <laughs> the old English language strikes again. <laughs> what you appreciate, appreciates. You know what that means? If we appreciate something, it goes up in value, and it appreciates in value. I like that. What you appreciate, appreciate. So, for Thanksgiving, improve the relationship. Well, what did I talk about this morning in our time? We want to blend of what I talked about last week. It's everything is part of this idea of being thankful. Thanksgiving increases your faith. Thanksgiving is a key part to the path to God's peace. Thanksgiving gives hope for a future. And I just finished with Thanksgiving gives uh, excuse me, Thanksgiving improves relationships. Let me pray over this message, these verses, this word, and over you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We are filled with gratitude. We are filled with thankfulness. We're filled with thanksgiving this morning for your great love that you've given to all of us. As we uh, end this Thanksgiving weekend, we would ask that you would help us to continue to blend these things that we've heard together. That we, just like this coffee I described, would um, be a rich cup of uh, coffee. We would have a rich life that has so many aspects coming into this idea of thankfulness. That uh, we would grow by it, our relationships would grow by it, and uh, we would be pleasing to you. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for all the things that you give to us, uh, for health, for provision. And I pray that this week, uh, as we end the Thanksgiving weekend, we would continue on with a lifestyle of thankfulness. So we pray a blessing on your word and your people. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you along the way. Amen.